saw how the banking system creates money by making loans in a fractional reserve banking system. And now we're going to talk about how the Fed is going to come in and stimulate the economy using expansionary monetary policy. So the way it does that is through what's called open market operations, and that just means the buying and selling of bonds with commercial banks. So what it's going to do, if it wants to increase the money supply, it's going to be buying bonds from banks. So these banks are just holding some bonds as assets, and the Fed is going to buy some of them at the market, whatever the market price is. Uh, the Fed is going to buy up some, some bonds from whoever wants to sell. And so the Fed is buying up these bonds. It's now going to be on the Fed's balance sheet over here. And in exchange for that, the Fed is going to give this bank some reserves. It's just going to create some reserves in an account with the Fed. So part of bank reserves are held in the form of accounts with the Fed. And so here the Fed has just created this $100 in reserves just out of nothing in exchange for these bonds. And so it's an asset for the bank. The bank now has these extra reserves. And corresponding to that asset, it's considered a liability of the Fed. So this is a strange sort of liability. The Fed just creates these liabilities, creates these reserves out of nothing. And um, the liabilities of the Fed are considered the monetary base. So the monetary base is made up of currency and bank reserves. And so this is what is in the direct control of the government. So the government can decide how much currency is out there. The physical printing of currency would be done by the U.S. Treasury and not for the purpose of monetary policy. So we're not really concerned here with the currency component. Um, but the Fed is going to create or destroy bank reserves uh, in order to affect the money supply. So the Fed d doesn't affect the money supply directly. It can directly affect the size of this monetary base, in particular the size of bank reserves. But that will indirectly affect the money supply. And so if the Fed wanted the money supply to be bigger, it can always just keep increasing reserves. And if it wanted to decrease it, as we'll see in a little a little bit, uh, it can reduce reserves. So remember what happened here. The Fed bought up these bonds and created these reserves. And this bank now has this asset of these bank reserves. And since these are not being held as part of a deposit, um, as, as backing of a deposit, these are all excess reserves. So whatever this bank might have some other deposits here, which are, it was already holding reserves that we're not showing, um, but these are all excess reserves now that have been created, and so the bank can just turn around and lend these out, and then we're going to get the whole money, money multiplier process. So the first loan here that this bank can make is the full amount of 100, and then that might just end up as a deposit in some other bank or even the same bank. And then as we've already seen, we're gonna hold 10% in reserve. We can lend out the rest and we can keep going. We get the whole money multiplier process. So again, Fed is creating reserves out of nothing, starting the process here by buying up these bonds, creating bank reserves. Right, those reserves can support up to $1,000 in deposits if we have the full money multiplier. So whenever the Fed is starting this process, the Fed wants to use expansionary monetary policy. Uh, this is all new money. So the $100 that was originally created that became bank reserves is new money. And then all of the money multiplied on top of that, uh, the whole $1,000. So we were assuming, remember, that people are staying in deposits. So the money supply is now completely in deposits. And that $1,000 is all new money started out with that with that Fed policy, that, that open market purchase by the Fed. So we kind of mentioned already what is going to prevent us from getting the full money multiplier. Uh, if at any point along the process here, so if this was a deposit, whether it came from what we just saw before, starting from the Fed, or if it came from out of cash and now someone put the money in the bank, um, and this bank then makes a loan and it ends up over here. So at any point, if people decide to hold some cash, so maybe this $90 gets lent out and not all of it ends up back into the banking system, then the whole process is going to be smaller. So that would reduce the money multiplier. And then also at any point, if banks aren't going to completely lend out their excess reserves, so this bank might decide to hold more than nine, then this loan will be smaller and then the whole rest of the process will be smaller. So either one of these things are going to give us less than the full money multiplier. So usually we're talking about the maximum 
that we will get with the money multiplier. Okay, so um, we, we mentioned before that people are staying in deposits, but in this, especially in this simplified example, we have kind of a precarious situation here where if this person actually did want to withdraw cash, right, we only have 10 in the vault. And so what's going to happen is if a bank finds itself short on reserves, if it's not holding enough excess reserves to meet withdrawals, the first thing it's going to do is to go to the federal funds market and just borrow reserves, um, just an overnight loan with other banks at this interest rate. So there's some interest rate that's going to clear this market at which banks are willing to borrow and lend very short-term loans for these bank reserves. So banks are just going to go and borrow at this federal funds rate. This is just a market between these banks uh, that determines this interest rate. So now we can see what people are talking about when we see that the Fed is going to increase or decrease interest rates. We might see a story like this. Um, the Fed is looking to raise interest rates. So what exactly are they talking about? What they're talking about is a target for the federal funds rate. So the Fed doesn't directly set this rate, but it has a target that it is then going to use open market operations to hit the target. So if the Fed wants to use expansionary monetary policy, you might hear something like the Fed is cutting interest rates by a quarter point. What that means is they are cutting the target for the federal funds rate by a quarter point. And in order to get the rate where it wants, it's going to use open market operations. It's going to buy bonds, inject reserves into the system, get the whole money multiplier process going. And because there's more reserves in, in the system, it's going to be cheaper to borrow reserves. So that's going to drive down the interest rate. So the Fed is influencing the Fed funds rate. It's going to just keep injecting reserves until it gets the, the rate that it wants, until it hits, it hits its new target. So it's going to be continuously using open market operations to hit the target that it wants. And then if it wants to, say, stimulate the economy again, it might lower the target if that's appropriate. And it's just going to keep using open market operations to hit the target. So it might have to buy more bonds in order to do that. Um, so we often think of monetary policy through this interest rate and through its effect on other interest rates. So we tend to assume that interest rates are going to move together. So this is one particular very short term interest rate between banks, but it's also going to affect other interest rates. So just to mention how this is going to affect the rest of what we're doing in macro here, in particular the aggregate demand model, um, we're usually think of, thinking of it in terms of interest rates. So the Fed is lowering the interest rate by using open market purchases, buying up those bonds, and the lower interest rate is affecting consumption and investment. So um, at a lower interest rate, people are more likely to consume rather than save, and that also makes investment cheaper. So that's where the stimulus is coming in. Um, so we're thinking of it in terms of the interest rate. But again, this is really the same policy. So lowering the Fed funds rate target, we're using open market operations in order to do that. We're going to buy bonds, inject reserves, lower the interest rate, and again, we're increasing the money supply. Other tools that the Fed has, although this is really the main tool, uh, the discount rate is the rate at which banks can borrow directly from the Fed. Now, generally, they're not going to do that because, for one thing, the discount rate is set above the Fed funds rate, so it'd be more expensive. And also, there's a stigma attached to borrowing from the Fed because generally, if you can't borrow in the Fed funds market, something's probably wrong, and um, you know you're sort of desperate and you have to go to the Fed and, and borrow at the discount rate. But that is another possible tool. So we might think of the Fed lowering that discount rate, making it easier for banks to borrow. That would be a stimulus, um, and especially in our very simplified examples. We could think of that as another tool to use as a stimulus. Uh, the other thing we might do is remember we had a 10% reserve requirement here. As these deposits come into our banks, we have to hold 10% in reserves. So it is possible that the Fed could change that reserve requirement and that would increase or decrease the money supply. So if we had to hold more reserves, then the, the loans, would, you know, next loan would be smaller and, and, and money multiplier would be smaller.
so that would reduce the money supply or vice versa. There's no reason to really mess around with the reserve requirement if the purpose is to increase or decrease the money supply. It'd be a lot easier just to use open market operations, but just theoretically that is another tool that we could use. Uh, there is one more that I'll, that I'll mention hasn't actually made it into our textbook yet. Uh, it's relatively new, but the Fed now has this other interest rate that it uses, which is the interest that it pays on reserves. So the, it used to not be the case that the Fed pays interest on reserves. It, uh, they do pay interest now. So that is another tool that they have to raise or lower the interest on reserves, which would increase or decrease the incentive for banks to hold on to those reserves. But we're going to kind of ignore that um, and just treat, again, mainly open market operations as our main tool and then possibly the other, these other tools that we could use.